Welcome to AP Psych Review with Mr. Chuck Schauhorn. One of the things that's often overlooked in uh, psychology is the, the advantages and disadvantages of research methods. Uh, books don't normally uh, put this in any kind of an understandable chart, and so what I've done is I've done that. And so I've got the, the various methods over here on the left, column of advantages, column of disadvantages. So a case study, sometimes known as a case history, sometimes known as a clinical study, um, advantages, good source of hypotheses, provides in-depth information, typically done in individuals, sometimes families, but um, they are often experiments of nature. They shed light on situations or problems that are unethical if we were to do them uh, purposefully or impractical to study in other ways. Probably the most famous example of a case study is going to be Jeannie, the girl who was found in uh, the early 1970s at the age of 13 who was uh, not able to speak and basically grunted and spat her way through, um, uh, through her first experiences with people. Disadvantages of case studies. The individual may not be representative or typical, and it's difficult to know which subjective interpretation is best. One of the challenges that psychology has is interpretation of data. And when it comes to case studies, there's a lot of background information that we, may just, we just don't know. We don't know what Jeannie was like before she was found at the age of 13, for example. Naturalistic observation. Advantage allows for uh, allows a description of behavior as it occurs in the natural environment, hence the term naturalistic observation. So we're watching people in their environment. And it's often useful in the first stages of a research program. But very little or no control of the situations. Observations can be biased unless there is some really detailed prep work done in the observation process. And, of course, you cannot um, conclude cause and effect with a naturalistic observation. In that case, researchers might turn to a laboratory observation that uh, allows more control than naturalistic, allows use of sophisticated equipment, and it allows the researcher to manipulate the situation. One of my favorite informal laboratory observations is the Candid Camera series, and that's where they uh, set up people in certain circumstances and see what plays out. Unfortunately, there are some disadvantages. allows the researcher only limited control of the situation. Observations, as always, may be biased does not allow firm conclusions on cause and effect, and behavior in the lab may differ from behavior in the natural environment. We know that when we are being watched, we will typically behave differently than when we, are, we don't think we're being watched. Surveys uh, provide a large amount of information um, on large numbers of people, especially attitudes, and so that's definitely an advantage. However, if your sample is not representative or is biased, it may be impossible to generalize the results. And, of course, that's what we want to try to be able to do. And, of course, depending on the survey and how it's done, responses may be inaccurate or untrue. So uh, if you have more interest in this, check out different polling companies. Uh, they do surveys all the time. You can actually get a job doing this. Psychological testing yields information on personality traits, emotional states, aptitudes, and abilities. But it's difficult to construct tests that are valid and or reliable. And literally, you can become a psychometrist. So psychological tests, if you're into this sort of thing, can be a career for you in the future. Correlational studies uh, do show whether two or more variables are related, but of course do not permit identification of cause and effect. The experiment, which we've already gone over in another video, allows the researcher to control the situation, permits the researcher to identify cause and effect. The experiment is the only method that allows you to determine cause and effect. It's the only method that shows you cause and effect. However, situations are often artificial and the results may not generalize well to the real world and sometimes it's difficult to avoid various experimental effects which hopefully you have read about in your textbook. Thank you and good luck on your AP Psych test.